Okay, so you want to draw one of these, do you? It's an anamorphic Rubik's Cube. And it's easier than you might think. You can do weird things with it, like... Ugh, ugh, and yeah. And you can make it look like a pancake. <laughs> well then, next. So, here's a cube. You don't really need a Rubik's Cube to draw one. I'll do this short video without a Rubik's Cube. I bought this one just for this video. You need to position it so that the back corner of the cube is in line with the paper so that you can actually see some paper behind it. That's quite important. And we've got two cameras, one from above, and one from our point of view. So all we want to do is take a nice sharp pencil and try to make a dot on the page right where that corner is. You can see how far back my hand is. And do that corner. Passing it over to the other hand and do that corner. You can see how far back the pencil tip is in relation to the actual corner. We're just making a mark on the page. Now we're going to do the front three corners. They're quite easy to do. Just be careful not to move the cube. Mark them up where they are. Now for the trickiest bit of the entire procedure. We want to get the angle to make the Y shape in the middle. And to do that, we're going to hold our ruler at an angle so that we can get this line here. We've already got the dot for the corner, so we're just going to put a dot on the page in the right line with that. Trying to get it right on the edge, not to wobble too much, it's quite tricky. This is the trickiest part of the entire thing. We're just putting a dot. There it is. That's in line with that. It doesn't look like it, but it is. Now we'll do it from the other side. Hold the ruler up in a nice line with that corner. Place a dot. My hand is right off the bottom edge of the screen. Two cameras and I still never managed to pick that up. We're just getting a dot on the page. Now we can move the cube out of our way. We're going to join the dots. And make ourselves a weird looking six sided hexagon sort of shape distorted. And this is the outline of our cube. I'm drawing it a bit darker than I would um, normally. But because it's for YouTube and you need to see it, I'm pressing a bit harder than I would. That gives us our strange hexagon. Now we need to draw the straight edge Y shape that comes in from both corners. That's where the dot comes in. Line it up with the two dots and put a faint line in. I'm doing it a bit darker for you. There's the other dot we put in. Line it up with the corner. And now we know where the two lines will cross. Right there. That's the point where we can drop the line straight down to the front corner. Just darken that up a bit. Now we know exactly where it goes. And you can see it from both perspectives at the same time. Now we'll speed it up a little bit. I'll just darken that in with a black marker. I'm using the ruler kind of backwards so that you can see what I'm doing. Trying to, there you go. And 
dropping all those lines in place. Because they're nice, invisible, and permanent. There we go, and you can see the perspective in the corner and the top down view. And making those lines a little bit thicker. Okay, so now we have to measure each line, divide it by three, measure one third in from each corner, and place a little mark. I have to measure each line to do this because they're all distorted and different. So you can't use a fixed distance. You have to measure each line, divide it by three, place a little mark a third of the way in on each side. Once you've done like the top, you'll already have top marks in place for the uh, sides to come down from. Speed through that for you. And then darken those lines in with a black marker. This isn't the only way to draw it, but this is my way without using any algorithms or vanishing points or anything awkward. The hardest part is putting those two dots in at the beginning. Freehand trying to hold a ruler in the air and the rest of it is plain sailing now all i'm doing is curving each corner with another black marker so it looks like they're stickers rather than you know squares it doesn't look very rubik's cube like now i have to decide which way up we're going to have it i'm going to go with the yellow to the right, blue to the left, and orange on the top. Although the top camera, it looks kind of red than orange. But it is orange. So we'll color that in. You can use markers, pencils, anything, whatever you've got. Speed it up a bit. And sometimes my pen picks up a little bit of the black and it starts to go dark. So I'll just rub it on a piece of scrap off camera to one side there. Then I do realize that I'm going to cut the end of this page off. I could just use the edge of the page then. So at this point, my uh, top down camera, for some reason, stopped recording. So, uh, most of the rest of the video will be just like this, view only, which is fine, we don't mind. We'll bring back the top camera, top view at the end. Then I get my blue brush pen and Color this side in. The blue's a nice darker color, so I don't have to worry so much about it picking up the black because it's uh, dark enough to hide the fact that it got black in it. And also, it's had more time to dry now. That looks kind of good. I like these marker pens, these uh, brush pens, they're quite good. Colour these ones in. Top ones look more squished and the bottom ones look more stretched out. But I have kind of slid it forwards a bit. Not right at the perfect angle to view it. And there we go. Colouring in all the little bits just to make sure they're done. Hope my squiggle doesn't say something rude in another language. Just a squiggle. And here's the part where you see my little secret. I actually have this in a pad, which I've got the wrong way round. I can keep it in the pad and cut out all of the excess paper that I don't need here.
Also, I'm using way too big scissors. If I had some little nail scissors, they'd be perfect for this. Just rounding off some of the edges and putting little nick in gaps between the two. Just little details like that will help to sell it as looking 3D. And if you're worried about the uh, paper showing through, don't worry. We'll touch it up at the end with another black marker and just clean up those edges so you can't see the page. You'll just see the black. Curve those corners a little bit. Try to get a little nick out of each one if I can. It's quite difficult with these scissors and they're not particularly sharp anymore. Well, this is, I need a new pair. There we go. Just chisel those bits out. It's uh, got a stubborn piece. I'm trying not to cut through the whole thing. And little things like that that just help. There you go. You can see how much that really helps the image. So, got myself another black pen. We'll just color those edges in, make sure they definitely are black. Could have made those lines a lot thicker. But uh, this is how I decided I wanted to do this one. Yep, making sure that's not visible. And here's a white pen. I'm just going to put some little reflections and shiny bits. Some other edges. I'm assuming that the light is from above and slightly behind it. I'm going to put some little reflected bits on these uh, orange areas. Not everywhere, but just some little spots here and there. And sometimes the, uh, the white fades into the orange. So I just go over it a couple of times just to make sure it really does have a little white tinge to it. Not very noticeable, but it's little marks that you know, help to bring the whole image together. Not exactly necessary, but it's just nice, a nice little touch. Front two edges facing us wouldn't get much light, but they got, might get a little bit of reflected light. Now I'm just going to line my ruler up with that edge, bring it down a little bit, maybe an inch, half an inch, doesn't need much. And will be our shadow it will just just help to give that illusion that it's sitting on the table and it's actually 3d so that's my method it's uh, not the most scientific of methods but you don't need to do any complicated algorithms or vanishing points or anything like that and it works and it looks kind of nice maybe a little bit distorted but uh it's it's pretty good and i like it it means you can do it anyone can try here's the view from above little stretched out and distorted and panning the camera down it kind of becomes a cube and goes back to stretched and flat from this angle you can roll a pencil or pen over it give you that good wow moment when you realize it's not 3d so i hope you enjoyed that i certainly did Fun project to do. Have a go. It's easier than you might think. Take care. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next.